And the CDC says it is relaxing COVID-19 guidelines just as children begin returning to school. Health officials say the shift reflects higher levels of immunity in our population because of vaccinations and previous infections, which there are many. Among the key changes, you don't need to quarantine if you come in close contact with someone who's infected. Other measures include contact tracing, routine testing, and social distancing. All of those are also ending. Joining us now to talk about what this all means is infectious disease doctor and senior scholar at the Johns Hopkins University Bloomberg School of Public Health, Dr. Amish Adalja. Dr. Adalja, welcome. Great to see you. So what do the CDC changes say about where we are in this pandemic? I mean, are we basically at a place where we know this isn't going away, but we just have to live with it the way we live with the common cold, perhaps? Exactly. I think we're at a point where we have so many tools that science has given us and so much immunity in the population from infections and from vaccinations that we can start to think about COVID-19 just like we do other respiratory viruses. And I think the guidance has to update. This isn't 2020, this isn't 2021. We have to have the guidance reflect people's risk of climatization to this virus and all the tools and knowledge that we've accumulated uh, since the pandemic began. You know, one of the biggest uh, changes was the quarantine, the, the part about dropping the 10-day isolation after exposure. Uh, that has alarmed a lot of people already I've seen on social media. Also, people I know who are calling me and saying, what's, <laughs> what's up with this? I, I, I'm not trusting that I'm not going to get infected if they drop that measure. What do you think contributed to that? I think what contributed to the fact is the fact that there is so much COVID-19 out there that if you're socially interacting, I've always told people just ex just assume that you're continually being exposed. So this is happening in everyday life. It's almost not special when you have a, a true exposure because there's so many exposures that happen when you go about your life. The other point is, is that you are now, if you are a vaccinated person, you are protected against what matters, severe disease, hospitalization, and death. This isn't going anywhere. There's going to be COVID-19 exposures 50 years from now. Right. And I think we have to start to understand that, that this has got to be something that's manageable for people. And if you're protected against severe disease because you're vaccinated or have access to Paxlovid or monoclonal antibodies, we're dealing with a different problem yeah. than what we were in the earlier era. And I think that's what the CDC guidance reflects. And really quick, I just want to stress, you're, we're talking about exposure because it's not if you're infected that the 10-day quarantine is dropping. It's, it's if you've been exposed, like if your phone says, hey, you may have been exposed, correct? Exactly. Okay. If you're somebody that's tested positive, you still need to isolate. Uh, quarantine is what we do to people who are not infected. Isolation right. is for people that are infected. Isolation is still going to be at least five days. Well, to that point, though, I mean, when's the last time you know somebody who actually did that? Because some of what I think the CDC is coming out with is sort of some common sense stuff. Like, for instance, relaxing guidelines on contact tracing and social distancing. I mean, let's be realistic. When is the last time you walked into a store and actually social distanced? I mean, uh, not in New York City, it's not happening. I don't know, maybe in some other parts of, of the it's country. It's a habit I'm already doing. Uh, I mean, time. maybe, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to poo-poo it, but I'm just saying some of this is a reflection of where we are right now as a society. I think where we're a little bit less uh, sort of in agreement is about the mask wearing, right? So what's the guidance there? Because we people still wear masks on buses and trains, correct? Um, but they don't really wear them many other places. So what's the guidance on mask wearing? The guidance on mask wearing still is based on the CDC community level. So if you're in uh, an area or a county where transmission and hospitalizations are at such a number or threat across the threshold, then the CDC will recommend masks for indoor use. But again, mask wearing has become something that is up to individuals' risk tolerance and up to business owners to decide what the right policy is. And I think that makes sense because, again, we're at a point where this is a more manageable infection. It is highly unlikely that we see hospitals in any type of crisis from COVID-19 in the future. So I think that this really does have to shift to each individual's risk tolerance. And for people that are immunocompromised, it does make sense for them to wear masks in high-risk situations. For lower-risk individuals, that may be something that they may or may not want to do, depending upon how much they're trying to avoid what really is a ubiquitous, unavoidable virus. Right. Yeah. And everybody's risk situation is different. That's important to remember. Yeah. Dr. Amish Adalja, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your insight.